Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Global Math Department. My name is Lee Natero, and I'll be your host tonight. Um, just to make sure our sound is working, if you can hear me, please type hello or hi or yes in the chat window. All right, um, super, thank you very much. Uh, tonight we're going to be hearing from Shelley Jones from Central Connecticut State University about Women Who Count, Honoring African-American Women Mathematicians. Uh, before I turn the presentation over to our speaker, uh, would everyone please introduce themselves in the chat window, telling us what you teach, where you teach, and what your Twitter handle is, if you have one. I am glad to see that we have some familiar faces or familiar names, I should say, with us tonight. I recognize several of you. Of you. And I hope that if you have other people here that are not here tonight that you'd like to uh, share this information with that you will share this information with them. So before I turn the presentation over to our speaker, I'd like to explain how these meetings work. These meetings are recorded on, and are available about 24 hours after the meeting ends. To view the recording, you would use the same link you used to get here tonight. The global math community prides itself on being friendly and supportive. The chat room is available for topical and general conversation throughout the meeting. I'll be sure to catch your questions for the presenter to be addressed at the end of the presentation. So tonight our speaker is Shelly Jones from Central Connecticut State University, and I'm gonna turn the presentation over to Shelly. Welcome, Shelly. Hi, can everybody hear me? I hope so. So let's see, let's get started. Um, so first I'm just gonna start by introducing myself. It sort of positions me uh, to let you know what I've been up to and how this whole thing came about with me uh, writing the book, Women Who Count. So I'll start from uh, my undergrad. I'm a Spelman College alumna, and that's in Atlanta, Georgia. It's an all girls school, and it's a historically black college. And Spelman really helped to uh, develop my math identity. And that has a big part of uh, why I did what I did with this book and, and why I do what I do. Um, I started as a middle school teacher um, after Spelman College um, and also a K-12 math administrator. Um, I'm a longtime member of the Benjamin Banneker Association. It's an NCTM equity affiliate. And with the Benjamin Banneker, I have really been continuing to learn about culturally relevant pedagogy and how to level the playing field for African-American students and for all students. Um, as a member of the Teacher to Teacher Global team, we do professional development. Um, right now, we've done some in Ecuador, um, Guatemala, um, Tanzania, and you know other places as well. But um, I, what, what uh, Teachers to Teachers has helped me to do is have more of a global perspective on education. And it's just nice to learn about other educational systems uh, to bring the information back here to the United States. Um, I'm a contributing author to The Brilliance of Black Children in Mathematics, Beyond the Numbers and Toward New Discourse. And in that um, book, I co-wrote a chapter with some colleagues, uh, Lou Matthews and Yolanda Parker, and we put forward a framework on culturally relevant, cognitively demanding math tasks. 
And it was a rubric and a, a framework and a rubric to assist teachers in modifying tasks that they already have and to make those tasks more culturally relevant because it's very difficult to start from scratch, especially when we have to follow a curriculum. And finally, I'm the author of Women Who Count, which I'll be talking about today. And I have two daughters and they help position me as well. <laughs> um, so I'll start with math identity development. Um, I talked a little bit about Spelman helping that along because part of uh, being a member of Spelman, being a student at Spelman and, a, and an alum, uh, they have a long tradition of excellence. And one of the things they teach you while you're there is failure is not an option. And so every day uh, we were made to believe that we could do anything. And when you're made to believe that, you begin to believe it. And so math identity is the dispositions and deeply held beliefs that students develop about their uh, excuse me, that students develop about their ability to participate and perform effectively in math context and to use math in powerful ways. I can say that many times, and I'm sure you've heard it as well, students will say, when will I ever use that? And so we have to begin to help students to see when they will use the math that we're teaching. We want students to know that there's math all around them. And when we talk about math, we're talking about all kinds of math and not just what students begin to um, believe is school math. And, 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 and they believe that that's all there is, is what we do in school, what we do on paper. And I know that that's changing. And I know people who are um, probably listening tonight, you pe I'm, I'm, it's like, um, preaching to the choir, right? You are the ones that want to learn more to um, how to engage our students. So that's what this is all about, is engaging students, but not just engaging them, but empowering them to want to use math in their own lives. And so when I have this graphic up, I want you to tell me in the, um, chat room, what do you notice and what do you wonder? So I'll give a minute for you to start typing that in. What do you notice and what do you wonder about this graphic? Okay, so I see that some of you have stated that the more famous mathematicians are the larger names, and that's true. And so this is a graphic of when we ask middle school teachers to name a mathematician, excuse me, when we ask uh, math teachers, so middle and high school teachers, to name mathematicians, these are the names that come up. And uh, you, we know Pythagoras, we know Gauss, we know Euclid, we know Euler, but we can kind of see Banneker in there, Benjamin Banneker. So he's becoming more well-known, which is great. And then I believe that that Johnson that I see might be Katherine Johnson. And so these are some names that we are beginning to know because of movies like Hidden Figures or because of organizations like the Benjamin Banneker organization. So we're beginning to know other names besides what some somebody wrote, um, are they all men or they're mainly old white guys. 
And so this is true and nothing wrong with old white guys or white guys, but we want to show students that there is a more diverse field in mathematics. So I use this analogy, um, Rochelle Gutierrez talks about this analogy a lot. And I, I loved it when I first heard about it, the mirror and the window. And so students need to see themselves in the mathematics that they learn and very seldom do they. And so that's one of the things that I like to talk about with culturally relevant pedagogy is how can we bring in the, the students' lived experiences? How can we bring in people from their community or situations that are, or issues in their community so that they can learn about their community, community either through, through social justice math or culturally relevant funds of knowledge? What are the things that we can use that students will feel more engaged in the mathematics? Whereas the other side of it is, sure, Students do need to learn about others. They need to learn about Pythagoras and Gauss. They need to learn about maybe students in Ecuador or Ghana. They need to learn about others, but they also need to see themselves. And more than likely students are learning about others and hardly and, and not learning about themselves. So, so, so these are some of the things that we need to do when, um, when we wrote the chapter on um, culturally relevant, cognitively demanding math tasks. The whole purpose was for teachers to be able to modify tasks so that they bring in information about students so that they can empower their students to want to learn math. So I'm, I wanna show you a video. Um, I'm gonna stop it at about six, six and a half minutes, which is a long time to watch a video, but it kind of gives you the backstory um, about the book Women Who Count and, and how that um, came about. So Lee, if you can play that, let's see. Actually, I need to go to it. That's okay, yep, you're gonna share your screen and uh, share the video. Okay. Yeah. All right, give me a second. I can figure this out. Okay, screen. <laughs> Education window, women who count. All right, let's see. For too long, the historical accomplishments of women of color have remained hidden. Though their dreams deemed forbidden, these trailblazers continue to work in the shadows of others who received all the credit. Well, to mathematics educator Dr. Shelley M. Jones, these facts didn't add up and hence a book that uncovers indeed these brilliant, courageous women, unhidden figures. The book is titled, Women Who Count. Oh, okay, Women Who Count, Honoring African American Women Mathematicians. It's a children's activity book I wrote to motivate children in grades three to eight, although it's appropriate for children of all ages. In the book, I have 29 mathematicians featured, and for each I have a sketch or a photograph. I also have biographies for each of the mathematicians, followed by elementary and middle school activities, such as word searches, crossword puzzles, um, equations, uh, solving equations, and I Spy Lab just because those are things that I think kids would enjoy doing. The book is sectioned into four parts. The first, the pioneers, the unhidden figures, and the contemporary first. And each of the women are different times in history. For instance, the contemporary first include mathematicians like Dr. Talitha Washington. She was the first African-American to receive a PhD in math at the University of Connecticut, UConn. And so in 2001, we are still having fun. When I saw that movie, it blew my mind. I think the next day I went out and started a Kickstarter campaign. Dr. Jones jumped into action, 
meeting with these iconic figures, doing research, or while continuing a busy schedule. Finishing the book while working full time was not an easy task. And it, it took me about a year to do it. And then it took me about another year to edit it. Actually, Dr. Jones was writing this book long before she knew. And so I created a bulletin board for the math department. And, and that on that bulletin board, I had Evelyn Boyd Granville. And, um, and now today, when I look back at that picture, I couldn't believe it that I already had her in there. Of course, there were the first. And anytime you're a first, I mean, you're an inspiration. You're a pioneer, but you're also just the first. Dr. Shelley M. Jones is the first African American to receive tenure and full professor at Central Connecticut State University. Certainly a woman who counts. So, one of the things I learned about African American women featured in my book is that they all had role models themselves. The role models weren't always black women, but they had role models. And most importantly, they had someone in their younger years that encouraged them to do math and that told them that they could do math. That's so powerful. There's so many resources out there that we need to use to inform our students and our children, because if they don't know their history, they don't realize the brilliance that they come from and their own brilliance. I want to thank you all for coming out this evening to share with me in my special showing of Women Who Count honoring. Okay. I am going to stop it there. That was long enough. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, Lee, I think I need you to put back on the, there we go. We're going to start from there. Okay, so um, it was obviously inspired by Hidden Figures. Uh, you saw that movie clip in there about Hidden Figures. And the gentleman here, uh, Rudy Horn, he was the mathematician from Morehouse College that uh, wrote the math on the board. So when the actress wrote the math on the board, it was actually Rudy Horn who showed her that math, recreated that math that was needed for that spaceship to make it safely back to Earth. And then we have in the circle in the middle here is Margot Shetterly, and she is actually the um, author of Hidden Figures. And she um, knew about these women growing up. And as an adult, she had heard many times her father talking about these women. But in Margot's mind, this was just Miss ja Mrs. Johnson and Mrs. Jackson from church. And so we have these hidden figures right in front of us sometimes that we don't um either recognize or we just think that this is what they do. This is their job. But one of the things we have to do is bring those people from our communities into the schools or at least bring their stories into the schools to help students to see that there are brilliant people in your midst. And then uh, Talitha Washington, I already spoke about her in the video. So the activity, activity book is for uh, grades three to eight and you heard the rest um, in the video, how um, it's sectioned into the first, the pioneers, the hidden figures, and the contemporary mathematicians. Um, so I, I wanna stop right here just for a second and give you a chance to either ask me a question or name a mathematician of color that you know, or that you've read about, that you've learned about, that you could use as a role model for students of color, but for all students. Um, so I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a minute to sort of either ask some questions or tell us about some mathematicians that you know.
and feel free to tweet if you want at Shelly M. Jones one. Okay, thank you. I hear some people say Hypathia. They know um, Talitha. <laughs> Jennifer, hi. Miriam, the late Miriam. Jermaine is female. Banneker, okay. All right, thank you for adding that, uh, Spellman. Evelyn Boyd Granville. Albert Frank Cox, thank you so much. And also feel free to tweet some of those so others can learn about these mathematicians. Hi, Jen. So the first were Euphemia Lofton Haynes, and um, I believe Euphemia's name is actually um, Martha Euphemia, but they called her Euphemia. She was the first African-American woman who uh, earned a PhD in math from Catholic University in 1943. And then we have Evelyn Boyd Granville, who is actually still living and she is 94 years old. And uh, she received, uh, she earned a PhD from Yale University. And then our third uh, mathematician is Marjorie Lee Brown. And so these are some of the women that you can definitely learn about. Uh, Martha Euphemia Lofton Haynes was born in 1890. Uh, she had a master's degree from the U University of Chicago. And back in those days, many of the women taught uh, elementary school, middle school, and high school. So they were K to 12 teachers. Um, and, and even after getting their degrees many times, um, their PhDs many times, they were uh, teachers because that was that is what was expected of women at that time. But later in her career, she did become a college professor. Uh, Dr. Um, Evelyn Boyd Granville was featured in the website Mathematically Gifted in Black. And this is a website that you can actually visit. I'm gonna um, try to go to it now. Um, it's a great website. Um, I'm, I hope that you can see this. And during Black History Month each day, they have a different featured mathematician. There's Evelyn Boyd Granville. And so this is an excellent website to go to and have your students do some research on mathematicians. I won't go to it now, but there is a section where they have what they call rising stars. And so these are some of the younger generation that um, are mathematicians as well. Okay, so I hope you are able to see that um, Mathematically Gifted in Black. Again, um, they will have um, a mathematician. They will feature a mathematician each day in the month of February, Black History Month. Um, I did see that someone wrote uh, Dr. Etta Faulkner. And the reason I'm featuring her here tonight is um, she was a, a member of the faculty at Spelman College for many years, 37 years, and she helped to bring a computer science department to Spelman College. And what she loved to do most 
was to open the eyes of her students to STEM. And that, in fact, she did do. In fact, her granddaughter, Dr. Shelby Wilson, is also uh, featured in the book, Women Who Count. So granddaughter and grandmother both are mathematicians. And then we have our hidden figures. Now, most people do know about the three hidden figures in the movie, Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, and Dorothy Vaughn. However, there is a fourth hidden figure. First of all, let me correct that. There are many hidden figures at NASA, but Christine Darden was the fourth hidden figure in the book, but she's one of the younger hidden figures. She's in her 70s now, and she is speaking at uh, many uh, universities and um, just to inspire students. So Christine was one of the, Dr. Christine Darden was one of the um, other hidden figures in the book, but not in the movie. So this is another time for you to um, take part in the PowerPoint uh, in the presentation. Who are the hidden figures in your world or in your field? Because maybe we're not all mathematicians, right? Maybe we have some scientists, we have some other STEM fields represented here today. So I would ask if you could either tweet or you can share now on the chat window some hidden figures. So we may not know the names that you share with us because remember hidden figures are sometimes people right in your midst, in your, uh, in, on, on your faculty, in your neighborhood. Um, so these are people who are hidden that we wanna bring to the forefront. So who are some of those people? Thank you. I don't know if it's Quran, but thank you, Quran. I miss you at CMC South. Okay, so I'm going to move on and we can continue to type in the names. Right, Dr. Talithia Williams. She has a great YouTube video on using statistics. I mean, she has a lot of great things, but that's one of the things I can say about Dr. Williams. Uh, we already talked about Dr. Uh, Talitha Washington. Now there's a Talitha Washington and then a Talithia Williams. And some people get those two women mixed up, but they are, um, I believe both Spelman alumna and in fact, many of the women featured in the book have undergrads, not all of them, but more than half have undergrads at historically black colleges. Now, um, back in the 40s and 50s, it was probably, you know, most of the women were only able to go to historically black colleges because it was still segregated back then. However, you had some like Euphemia Lofton Haynes and Evelyn Boyd Granville, they actually attended as undergrads Smith College in uh, Massachusetts. And back then, even though most colleges were segregated, uh, Smith College did allow colored girls to attend their university, their college. So, um, so that's a little tidbit there. Um, let's see, what else about? Okay, I'm gonna move on. Um, so I'm not gonna show this video because I felt like the other video was kind of long, but I do want you to know that if you wanna show a video to your students about women in STEM, the National Science Foundation, NSF, has a video. If you look, at, um, if you look up Talitha Washington's uh, website, you will, find that video and I'm sure it's on NSF 
um, website somewhere as well. But there's a video that talks about women in STEM, and that's one that you probably would want to show your students, uh, especially if you have uh, girl, young girls, because she specifically talks about uh, young girls in STEM. Um, so one of the things that I do when I talk to young girls, and, and excuse me, when I talk to student groups, and actually um, at CMC South, I had um, teachers and we played bingo. And the bingo game that I created based on the book, Women Who Count, um, has um, the women's names, but we also I also have uh, facts about the women. So I may say a hidden figure, but the answer is Katherine Johnson. Or in some cases, I talk about math vocabulary. So instead of talking about um, a palindrome number, I actually have the number written down. Let's just say, for instance, one, four, five, four, one. I will say a palindrome number and the students have to put their marker on the palindrome number. And so this is a way to um, actively engage students in a fun game, but they're learning about the women uh, mathematicians, and they're also learning some math vocabulary, or at least, br you know, bringing it back to their consciousness about the vocabulary. And I wanted to show you a few of the um, activities as well from the book. Um, when I, <clears throat> excuse me, when I play the bingo game, before I play the bingo game, I give the students um, a chance to read up about the the different the women during the different times. And so this is an example of a little card that I have with the pioneers. And I've selected some of the women because it'd be hard for students to learn about 29 women at one time. And so um, I just have a selected group of, of the women. So these are some of the women that I have on the bingo game. Um, Dr. Sylvia Bozeman was a is a retired professor um, from Spelman College. Dr. Gloria Conyers Hewitt is professor emeritus at the University of Montana. And one of the things that um, that I found is when I talk to um, students and I talk to them about these women, they want to know more than just the accolades. They want to know more than just the Lifetime Achievement Awards. They want to just know, well, why did they get into math? Or what made them like math? Um, they want to know something personal about the women. When a middle school teacher asks her students, um, name a mathematician of color, the students were not able to name many mathematicians of color. And when they did, it was never a woman. It was never a female. And so when she asked the students to name entertainers and athletes, not only were the students able to name the athletes and the entertainers, they were able to name things about the athletes and the entertainers. Students want to know. They want to know, does the person have children? Uh, do they have pets? They want to know that these are real people. They're mathematicians, but they're real people. And so these are some of the uh, women that I have them read about, and then we play the game. And then here's one more group. Um, so Dr. Chelsea Walton, for instance, they love to read about her because not only is she a Sloan Research Fellow, which is one of her accolades, but she lives with her husband and two dogs, Dr. Boom Boom and Mr. Mischief Maker. And so these are the kinds of things that the students will laugh about. And they'll remember Chelsea because she told us something about herself that the kids find interesting. Uh, Dr. Yolanda Parker, she's a hidden figure. She was selected by the National Society of Black Engineers as a hidden figure of Dallas-Fort Worth. So these are women in our midst, and they are women who give back to their communities. All of these women go back into their communities and do work with their communities to broaden a student's idea of who mathematicians are 
and what mathematicians is, uh, what math is like. And then this is the bingo game. These are the women and these are the uh, vocabulary words. Um, there's 25 spaces on the board and we play and we just have fun with it, learn about the women, uh, talk about the uh, tessellations and the median, you know, just math vocabulary that students should know anyway. And if they don't, it gives us a chance to talk about it. So these are some pictures just to show you some of the people that, um, I mean, from a little boy, uh, they just, they love, children love to pick up uh, the book in, in color, um, plot points to make the Apollo spacecraft. One of the things I wanted this book to do was um, spark students' interest in math. You know, because many times students like math, sometimes they just don't want to do school math. So, you know, as a as a teacher myself, I taught middle school and right now I teach um, pre-service teachers that will teach elementary school. Uh, when the teachers, when the pre-service teachers say to me, you know, I want to do things that are fun, I remind them that yeah, we, we wanna teach math. We want students to learn math first and foremost. So when I say I want them to have fun, I really, what I mean is I want them to be engaged. And I try to help pre-service teachers see the difference between you know just having a bunch of fun and engaging students so that they're actually learning the math. And the difference between that is that the students, although they are challenged, they will stick with it. They don't just give up right away because it's something that they want to do. It's something that's interesting to them. And so these are some of the activities, the color by shape activity. The reason uh, I like this one because I have them color all the rhombi pink or purple. And so what happens is they look around and they don't see any rhombi because they usually think rhombuses are just the slanted but I want them to see that the square is a rhombus as well. And I want them to be reminded of that. And so if they don't know that already, that's a, a, a nice talking point. With the quadrilateral transformations, I have them plot points and then I have them expanded. I have them increase the size, right? Uh, both the X and the Y, but then I have them only stretch it out with the, increase in the X, doubling the X and keeping the Y the same. And so these are things that they can just pick up and do. They don't need someone to say, this is how you do it. Now do it. They can just pick up the book, read the directions and try to do it. That's I, I want them to be challenged. I want them to pick up the book on their way to grandma's house or, you know, at an after school program or even in a classroom. Um, during center time. You know, this could be something that teachers use in the classroom as well. Uh, this is uh, just a less race uh, using integers. So I just wanted to show you a few of the activities from the book. There are many more. Some of them are, um, I have some um, word searches. I have uh, crossword puzzles. I, I just have things that students can color, but it all has a math bent to it. Um, being that I'm talking to teachers, one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to share with you some of the books that I've read uh, to learn about culturally relevant pedagogy and to learn about teaching math for social justice. And so these are some of the books that I'm learning from, some of the books that I use in my classroom, math. Um, I have a class called Math and Culture. Uh, math and diverse culture, excuse me. So I use rethinking math and math as a verb. So these are great uh, resources that you can use. Math, I like math as a verb because for each of the contexts, they uh, bring it to a pre-K to two level, a three to five, a grade six to eight, and then a high school level. So they give you ideas for each of those uh, levels, those grade level bands. And then rethinking math, um, is teaching math for social justice. And they give you ideas like um, 
using statistics, buying a buying a house while black or brown. Um, so if you're going to use something like rethinking math, your level is going to be probably more like a level three in terms of the type of social justice ideas uh, that you're looking at. Level three being sort of the highest, the, the ones that would have students critique society. Um, the math culture and popular media is, is nice, although it's a, it's, it's a little older now, but they use things like um, movies, Aquila and the Bee, for instance. And in that movie, um, they have you watch a clip of the movie and then they share with you some math ideas. And just in case you don't know this, Hidden Figures has a bunch of materials out there that you can use uh, in your math classrooms. And actually they have math, science, and they have um, history social studies. So they have um, ideas for all of those classes. There's a place called, a website called Global Math Stories, lots of ideas there. Um, and then I showed you uh, Mathematically Gifted in Black. They have lathisms.org and that's a, a website very similar, but they um, highlight and feature um, Latinx um, mathematicians. Um, and so I won't read to you all the books because you can see them there. But um, one of the first books I read was The Dream Keepers by Gloria Latson Billings. And she is one, the one who coined the term culturally relevant pedagogy. And she talks about uh, teachers of African-American students. And these were teachers that everyone, the students, the parents, the community, uh, colleagues at the school all said, these are great teachers. These are good teachers. So why are they good teachers? W what is it about them makes them a good teacher? And she talks about that. And she um, followed these teachers for several years and interviewed them and observed their classroom. So these are great resources for you to learn about. Um, I want to leave some time for questions, so I'll be stopping in a minute. Um, so those books were great resources in those websites. Um, I forgot to mention the Benjamin Banneker website, bbamath.org. It was there. So you'll have that on the, um, on the PDF. And then my website, um, is womenwhocount.net. You can read about some of the things that I've been doing, um, around the book. Um, a lot of what I do is talk to student groups. Um, they really are my target, although, of course, I would love teachers to get the book to um, use in their classrooms. It's, it's not a curriculum, but it's something that you can use to just open that field of mathematics to students to show them that there are women who count. And I started with African-American women because I am an African-American woman. But I think that you can help students to see that this field is very broad, um, and even STEM, and begin to help students to learn about uh, women and men of color in the, in, in the STEM fields. Um, and then you could also, if you want, purchase the book from the AMS bookstore. It's also on Amazon. It's not a commercial, but some people want to know where they can get it. Um, so this is what I really want you to do. If you tweet, I would love for you to tweet about a commitment that you will make um, as a result of today's presentation. What is it that you want to do moving forward um, to increase um, the awareness of, of, of other people of color in STEM, or I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but what is it that you want to do as a commitment? I would love you to tweet about that, but I also like you to type it into the um, chat so that we have that. And if you have any questions for me, this is a great time to ask them. Thank you very much, Shelly. Um, so any questions that people have, please feel free to type them in the chat window. And also please uh, tweet out uh, the commitment that you're going to make as a result of today's presentation. And also please feel free to share that in the, the chat window.
I see some people I, I know. I see, hi, Gina. <laughs> and Jennifer. Hi, Kimberly. Karen. Jen. Aiden. So many people. Blackwell. Hey, that's my last name. All right, so what, all right, let's see. Making this a part of my syllabus for my math class for elementary education ma majors. Yes, Lee, I've, I've definitely done that. I have, I've, I have um, brought this into um, not necessarily the book, but just the idea of um, introducing students to a more diverse field in math. And, and actually, I have my students do a, community walk where, or they can choose from a community walk or interviewing a student. And it's so interesting because they always find out so much more than they thought they knew about the students because we, we think we know our students until we interview them and then we find out so much more. So I have them either do a community walk so they can learn about their um, students a little more and so that they can bring that information into the classroom. And it's really helpful for pre-service teachers, but I, I believe that um, in-service teachers could, could do the same thing. They can do that community walk. They can attend events that are happening in the community where they work if they don't live there already. So these are some things for sure that, that I think people can do either on their syllabus whether they're at the um, collegiate level or whether they're in the K to 12 level, there's room to bring these things in, no matter what level you teach at. I see somebody teaches adult basic education. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think definitely that they bringing in these women and bringing in other mathematicians could help even adult learners see that, wait a minute, I can do this too. Remember, I tried to share some of the stories about um, the women in general, like just what they did, what what they do um, in their free time. You know, they 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 go to church services. They in the Hidden Figures book, they talk a lot about how the women uh, led um, um, community um, type activities, like the Girl Scouts. So um, that's, that's one of the things I liked about the Hidden Figures book is that they talked a lot about what the women did outside of um, their math accolades, you know, and, and much of it was helping their communities. And um, I thank you as well, people who enjoyed the presentation and are saying it right now. I thank you as well for being here tonight. All right. If there are any other questions or comments in the next few minutes, uh, please feel free to type them in the chat window. And I thank you very much, Shelly, for joining us this evening and uh, sharing your expertise with us. Thank you, Lee. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, before I stop the recording, I wanted to uh, invite everyone here to join us next week for blunt observations and practical strategies for orchestrating far more impactful PD in mathematics. And this is a session that is for K-12 teachers and it's being uh, presented by Steve Lenwan. And uh, he will be here next week and hopefully uh, we will have Amanda Risky as our host. And uh, if not, then maybe I will see uh, you the following week uh, when we hear about math cognition um, from Adam Yankee. So thank you very much, everyone, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. <laughs>